Okay, it's recording. So um, good evening, good afternoon in, uh, in Egypt and good morning here in uh, Boston. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you uh, our next um, IRIS guest lecturer, Professor Ahmed Gaber from the uh, Port Said University in Egypt. And uh, just uh, for those of you who don't know him, um, Ahmed and I have been collaborating for, I think, I don't know how many years. Do you know, do you remember how <laughs> many uh, years? Since 2007. Uh, from 2007, when um, Professor Gabor came uh, as a, back then as a master student, right? To Boston University and he spent uh, six months with us, I think, I believe. Uh, that was his first visit to Boston University out of many visits. I have lost mm -hmm. counts how often you have been here to Boston right. University. Oh. And um, um, yeah, please un um, mute yourself if, uh, if possible. Um, and uh, uh, um, we have been involved in joint research in Egypt, but also uh, recently in uh, in Indonesia, um, Dr. Gaber, he is a geologist, and uh, he's uh, his specialty, or one of his specialty actually, is the use of um, remote sensing, especially uh, radar remote sensing, um, in the um, exploration and assessment of um, uh, water resources as well as in detecting land surface deformations. And he will um, talk about his research work and uh, this um, technique, uh, radar, remote sensing, not only satellite radar, but also he has worked extensively using uh, ground-based uh, radar systems. And two years ago, that's what we were chatting a little bit about, um, Dr. Gaber um, was able to visit uh, Indonesia and his visit coincided with uh, our trip to Indonesia with Iris students. And so that, uh, Ahmed, so that you know, those um, uh, young students uh, that you see in the pictures uh, are from Boston. And, uh, and some of them are from, uh, well, they haven't turned on all their cameras, but I guess uh, there are also uh, UNDIP students joining us. You know? And uh, so um, without further ado, I would like to uh, give you the, um, the, you know, the floor for presenting your talk. Let me give you the uh, share screen permission. Okay. Thank you, Magali. Uh, hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I have received many requests from Magali to make the lecture uh, um, as simple as I can. So I will try to do that. Uh, and please feel free to ask uh, a question. Um, actually, my background, as Magali mentioned, <coughs> sorry, is dealing with uh, Razor sensor. I will create, share the screen. Okay. So, uh, as Magali mentioned, yeah, my background and my research is focusing on using the uh, radar sensor, whatever the platform if it is the space platform or ground uh, platform or airborne platform, even borehole uh, platform. Uh, the mathematical and processing and focusing background all the same, even from space, from the ground surface, or even uh, under the ground uh, through the borehole. So uh, it is imaging using a specific uh, signals of the electromagnetic uh, wave spectrum. Uh, as you know, all the remote sensing sensor
even the optical sensor or okay. thermal sensors or microwave sensors uh, are using the electromagnetic wave uh, spectrum. The researcher used to call this spectrum as a natural global pressure. Uh, each part of this uh, spectrum is, is being in use and uh, it is contributing, contributing much in our uh, new life. Uh, uh, my background, uh, my research is focusing on this range of wavelength, is a microwave range. All the radar satellite or radar sensor are using uh, this microwave uh, range. And this range, the wavelength is around uh, one centimeter to one meter wavelength and with different frequencies. Uh, there is a regulation for using such uh, uh, wavelengths because it is very close to communication signals and radio and TV signals. So there is a uh, rules or something controlling the using signals from special from space. It is allowed only to use uh, the C signals, C band and S band and L band. Actually, they classify these signals with uh, and give them uh, give it uh, the this terminology k k e t u x e s l and b uh, each term it has a wavelength and frequency so the shorter wavelength it has a higher frequency and longer wavelength it has a shorter frequency uh, from space we allowed only using x band which is around uh, three centimeters and uh, average 10 uh, gigahertz frequency and C band and uh, L band. And others, we can use it uh, using ground based sensors. Uh, this is just for controlling and also uh, avoiding the interference between the uh, satellite radar satellite that we are using for research with the other satellites that we are using for communication or TV or television uh, uh, purposes. So from space, we are using the X, T, e, and L band. And I will show later uh, what are the benefits of each wavelength. Uh, the radar satellite is, uh, we call it active sensor. It is unlike the optical one. The optical satellites are uh, passive. It depends on the electromagnetic waves that comes from uh, the sun. And it is sun synchronous. This is the optical one. Here for radar, it is self-eliminated sensor. It is sending its own signals. It is uh, imaging day and night and totally independent than the sun. And also transmitting the signal in a linear shape, linear form. It is not ellipse, ellip, elliptical or circular. It is sending the signals in a linear shape. It can be in a horizontal or vertical and receiving the echo, the return. So the satellite transmitting the signals and receiving the echo from the signal that already transmitted from the sensor, okay? And it's sending these signals uh, like a pulsing, a train of pulses, send the signals and just hold on, receive the echo and then send back the other signal to avoid the interference between the transmitting and receiving one. So there is a time shift between transmitting and receiving the echo. Uh, and because it is a microwave, longer wavelengths, longer than the optical and the thermal, it can uh, penetrate the cloud. So it is imaging in all weather conditions. So it is imaging in all weather conditions, imaging day and night, 24 hours, and sending its own signals in a linear form. It can be horizontal or vertical or both. Sometimes we are transmitting both and receiving the echo from the both uh, horizontal and vertical signal. Okay, so it is, it is very important to stay, it is active satellite. So just I, I here I'm comparing two different images. The left one is the radar image and the right one is the optical image for the same size. Uh, we can see here for the right one, it is, covered by uh, a heavy cloud cover. And it is also, yeah, yeah, there is a little information that we can extract from such optical satellites. And even for tropical uh, areas like Indonesia, like Boston, uh, 
along the year, the entire year, will have a heavy cloud cover. So it is tricky to pick uh, the good or best or cloud-free optical satellite image for these tropical sites. Um, although the radar, as I mentioned, it can penetrate the cloud and no problem with the cloud cover. And uh, we can use the, the images without any uh, difficulty, any limitation. Yeah. Uh, here also a very, very important uh, term, which is the term SAR. SAR means synthetic aperture radar. Uh, this is the only uh, slide that I have to, to uh, discuss in Gali with a little bit uh, in detail. <laughs> the only one, I promise. SAR uh, means a synthetic aperture radar. There is, are two different satellites, SAR and RAR. RAR means a real aperture radar. SAR gives more or higher spatial resolution image, SAR synthetic aperture radar. because if I want a high special resolution satellite image, I have to increase the length of the antenna. From this equation, the resolution is a function with the signals, the, the height of the satellite, the wavelengths that we are using and the length of the antenna. And physically it is very difficult to manufacture very, very long antenna in the space. So we overcome, or the researcher overcome such kind of uh, limitation uh, by mathematically uh, way. Uh, so like synthetic, something not real, just mathematical, just to increase the length of the antenna and thus increasing the special resolution. So the term SAR means synthetic aperture. I increase the length of the antenna mathematically just to improve and get high special resolution uh, satellite image. That's it. Okay, and it is side looking, uh, nadir looking, and transmitting its own uh, signals and receiving the echo. Uh, and this is uh, uh, a radar image for El Jumeirah in the United uh, Emirates, Arab Emirates. Uh, and it is a grayscale color. The black one means. Uh, very low signals comes from this side, and the white colors mean very strong signals comes of them from this part. Uh, strong in terms of intensity of the backscatter power, in terms of backscatter power. The white means high return, and the black means low return. And I will discuss later how we can use this information for geological and different applications. Yeah, as I mentioned, the radar sensor, it is an active sensor transmitting signals. So we can, uh, I can, we can put it on a different platform. Uh, for far range, we call it far range radar system, like a space board uh, satellite or airborne satellite. And near range radar system, like ground-based SAR or GBR. GBR also, it's a kind of SAR, synthetic aperture rate. Or we can put it on the borehole. We, can, we call it borehole radar uh, imaging. All of them, all of them have the same mathematical background and almost the same image processing using Fourier transform. Okay, uh, since the satellite already transmitting the signals and receiving the echo, so we have three different information we are receiving for each cell or each pixel on the ground. The first one is the power, the intensity of the backscatter signals. Some sites give low backscattering return and some sites can give high backscattering return. And this is, I will show you later the case study, how we can use this, this information uh, for, uh, uh, for application, different things. Not only geological application, I will just uh, mention different application. Uh, the second information, we call it the phase information. So, so the first one, we call it the power information. The second one is the phase. The phase means the distance, the travel distance of the signal from the satellite until it reaches the ground and hit the ground and scattered back to the satellite. So we can use 
uh, this information and estimate the distance, and thus we can convert it to height. And later we can, if we use different time series, laser satellite for the same site, we can estimate the change in the phase or the change in the distance between the satellite and the ground, and we can relate it to the ground deformation. So the, diff the second deformation is the traveling distance. The third one is the direction. The third deformation is the direction. So uh, when I'm transmitting linear uh, signals, uh, if it is in horizontal direction or vertical direction, it is returned with a switch, not in the same direction. It has some switches related to interaction, lo the local interaction with the uh, site on the ground. Okay, so we also measuring this switch in the direction of the return signals, and it is information. It carry information about the uh, targets. So also it has its many applications, and I will show you uh, how we can use the change in the return, the change in the direction of the return signals, and different applications for this information. So just memorize that we have three different information, the power, the travel distance, and the change in the direction of the signal that already hit the ground and uh, backscatter to the satellite. So the next slides, I will show different application for each uh, information. This is the view uh, uh, application for the power in Tennessee. So as I mentioned, the black colors means very low uh, backscatter return. And the white one means uh, high backscatter uh, return. So the low and the high backscatter return, it has a relationship with two different information. The surface roughness. And the second one is the physical property of the target, which is called the dielectric constant out or permittivity. Uh, by increasing the surface roughness, the backscatter return is increased. So if I have a flat surface, so I am expecting very low backscatter return. If I have a rough surface, like a forest or like a mountainous area, I'm expecting to see or, or building or urban area uh, or infrastructure, I, I'm expecting to receive high backscatter return. This is the relationship between the power and surface roughness. Uh, the second uh, physical, the second one which is con contributing in the the return, the power of the return signals, is the dielectric constant, which means the low dielectric. Uh, as you know, the the space or the, or the air, it has a dielectric constant of one uh, value one. So the electromagnetic wave is propagating in uh, the air with the speed of light, without any attenuation. So when it is hitted another target, so we are expecting return has a relationship between the, uh, the atmosphere, the air, and the second target. If the second target, it has uh, a high dielectric constant, like a metal, so we are expecting very high return. Power. And if we uh, have a very low uh, target, low has low dielectric constant, so we are expecting uh, very low backscatter energy. So also I can use this information to classify the surface roughness and also to uh, map or uh, map the target surface target based on their uh, dielectric constant. And this is the information what we are using to estimate the soil moisture uh, retrieval. Uh, based on the dry soil, it has a low dielectric constant. So we are expecting low uh, backscattered return. And if it is, there is a moisture, uh, the water has 81, the value 81 of the electric constant. So it is increasing the dielectric constant of the soil. So we are expecting the soil more or higher backscattered return if the soil is getting moisture. So this is how we can estimate the soil moisture from the radar satellite. Okay. And also because we, 
uh, I, I live in arid uh, country, so we have a mini desert. Uh, the sand which is covered the desert, it is very well sorted and also it has a very, very low dielectric constant, which is around three, very close to the air. So the radar signals can penetrate the sand and uh, propagate inside the sand without attenuation. And it can image inside hidden, any uh, target hidden uh, in the sand. So uh, in this slide, we have two different image. The other one is a red uh, optical one. We can see the river Nile and this side is sand. Uh, there is no feature we can see from the optical satellite on the upper image. Uh, although the, the lower one is a radar one, radar satellite, and we can see the river. And there is a, a value drainage or value channel for the river Nile. It is totally hidden under the sand. Using the radar satellite, we can see, see it clearly uh, because uh, as I mentioned, the sand, the dry sand of the desert is a good, very good environment for the radar signals to propagate inside it with limit attenuation and can image any site hidden uh, under the sand. So we use it for the desert, the Egyptian desert, and many deserts in Africa. And we have a very nice and interesting uh, maps for the Value River uh, along this desert. Also, uh, this is the Suez Canal. And on the eastern side of the Suez Canal, we have also a sand sheet. And using the radar satellite, we uh, also mapped a meandering uh, river, very old meandering river, which is totally hidden under the sand. And also uh, for geological application, we can expect there is a value environment and uh, it was a running river along this uh, area. And maybe there is an old civilization uh, was there. So along of stories, we can tell from such uh, radar image. Yeah, also the soil uh, moisture retrieval or estimation, we can estimate it based on the, uh, the, back, the power of the backscatter uh, energy of the satellite. So the higher or lighter color means higher backscatter return, means it is, has moisture content higher than the darker, uh, darker side, okay? But remember, there is two uh, variables uh, affecting the backscattered return, the surface roughness and the uh, moisture content. So if the surface roughness, no change in the surface roughness and all the surface roughness are the same along this devil shape. So means the difference might be related to moisture, moisture content. Uh, or might be related to different uh, vegetation height uh, or leaf density. So we have to answer one variable, even surface roughness or the soil moisture in order to uh, estimate uh, each of them. Also for the power, we can uh, estimate the current gradient of the ocean. The calm or the stagnant water, we are expecting very low backscatter return. Uh, however, for the uh, high wave, we are expecting high backscatter return, uh, return. So also we can use this information to estimate the wave height, wave velocity, wave direction of the ocean. And this is also another uh, application for radar. We can see the waves and also, yeah, we can, uh, it is very easy to extract the wave height and wave uh, direction, even the speed of the waves using radar satellite. Uh, another application for the power is the oil spill. Also, we can use the satellite, radar satellite, to uh, measure uh, and map the oil spills along the water body. The second one, second application, as I mentioned, is the travel distance. So the satellite is orbiting in the same, with the same height uh, orbit and transmitting its own uh, signals and it travel and hit the ground and scattered back to the satellite. So we can just divide in the two way travel time and we can estimate the uh, distance between the satellite 
and the ground. And we can, using two different uh, images for radar, uh, as a stereo imaging, we can generate and estimate the height of any point on the ground. So most of the digital elevation models that which is freely available along uh, the USGS uh, platform, the SRTM uh, data, uh, are generated using uh, radar uh, C band radar uh, satellite. So the digital elevation model of the ground we can generate it from the uh, from the uh, travel distance from the satellite to the ground. And there is a lot of application using the SRTM. We can estimate the drainage pattern, the drainage density, the upstream, downstreams, and the watershed, and all this stuff. And this is one application <coughs> we have used with my colleague in Boston University, and we extracted value lakes in uh, Niger uh, Desert. These value lakes, uh, and it, we expecting these uh, areas is potential area for groundwater uh, exploration. Uh, the second uh, application for the travel distance. Uh, if there is a change in the travel distance between the satellite and the object on the ground, especially the building, that means there is a change in the building or deformation has been uh, occurred for the ground surface, uh, like subsidence, land subsidence. So as I mentioned, the satellite is orbiting in the same orbit with the same height uh, and uh, using different uh, or time series uh, images, uh, we can estimate the change in the travel distance and we can relate it to the land subsidence uh, deformation. So this is the, uh, we can say like uh, in a specific year, we have this uh, travel distance and on another year we have, uh, that is the travel distance is getting uh, larger. So we just estimate the shift is the difference and we can relate this difference to uh, land deformation on the ground. And this is the, mainly what we are using to estimate the land subsidence along the city. <coughs> For uh, DNSR, we call it DNSR, differential interferometry synthetic aperture rate. We are using uh, different images for different years and make a poor registration, interferogram, uh, measuring the coherence, and then uh, making unwrapping. This is the flow chart of uh, estimating the land subsidence. And uh, we did that for Borsaid, where uh, I'm teaching at Borsaid University. Uh, this is Borsaid City, and we can see uh, here is the range, the velocity uh, millimeter a year. We have a range like 15 to minus uh, 10 millimeter a year. This is the average. And the study period from 2017 till 2021. And we just for field valid validation, we extracted some high subsided areas and we uh, decided to enter, make interpretation to start such high subsided areas. And we found there is an urban expansion. A uh, new building already has been uh, built along this site, which might cause. Uh, uh, convection for the underground soil. <clears throat> uh, this is for uh, Borsaid, and we did the same for Alexandria City, coastal areas. Uh, of course, through our project with Magali and our colleague in, in Samarang, we did the same uh, technique for Samarang. <clears throat> we used satellite image covering the period from 2015 to 2019, and we extracted such subsided area, and we have very, very interesting trend for subsided area. We can see the northeastern part of uh, Samarang is subsided with uh, sub subsidence uh, uh, range or average subsidence uh, around uh, 50 millimeter uh, a year, which is a bit large value. And we uh, try to enter, make interpretation for such uh, phenomena, and we just plotted the well-known uh, fault, which is called Samarang fault. This red line, this one, uh, is called Samarang fault. Uh, and 
the interesting thing we can see uh, th this is future line or the boundary between this high subsided area and the uh, relatively uh, fixed area. We can see it is located exactly along the summering fault. And we have another fault which is called lessened fault, also located in uh, this northeastern part. So we can relate such a high subsided area to uh, this uh, summering fault. Um, there is an intermediate process step uh, for interferometry, which is called coherence uh, change uh, detection. Coherence map. Actually, in order to estimate the subsidence, I have to focus on the pixels which uh, uh, which do not change it uh, along the uh, the period of study. Which means. It is uh, not logic to use uh, the pixels of the vegetation. So the vegetation, it can be harvested or it can be grow up. So there is a change, natural change. And also it can make a change in the travel distance of the signal. So the logic uh, tell us we have to use the pixels which show no change, uh, like building. We are not expecting the building is getting higher or, or lower uh, uh, man made. So we are just counting the big things, which has high coherence, which means no change, and using these big things for estimating the land subsidence. Okay. And also, we can use this one to uh, investigate the urban expansion. So which means the high coherence pixel is increased, are increased, which means there is a building already has been built, has been built during this uh, period. And also we can use it as a map, mapping the urban expansion. So we can see the high coherence pixels, the brown or, or yellow and brown pixels. Uh, this is the watershed, which is called Garang watershed in Indonesia. And we can see the pixel is getting increased, which means the building expansion is getting increased, which is tricky using optical satellite. And Magali knows this very well because we tried several times using optical to map the urban expansion, and we have uh, many challenges to uh, to do that accurately. Uh, as I mentioned, using radar, it is uh, can be done. Uh, yeah, for desert environment also. We can detect the dynamic sand dunes, the moving, the sand uh, dunes encroachment. We can also, as you can see in the, this image, this is the crescent, crescentic shaped dunes. We can see it, it show no coherence, which means there is a big change, which means it is a dynamic, it is moving. So also I can use, use this uh, uh, CCD, which is a new, relatively new technology for uh, using uh, to detect any change. We use the change detection, change detection using optical, whatever using CCD coherent change detection is a relatively new methodology to detect any change, change on the ground. And yes, I, we did uh, many applications or many uh, manuscript uh, published paper using such CCD method. Uh, back to the third one and last one is how to use the change in the back, back scatter thickness uh, for different applications. So as I mentioned, the surface should be uh, relatively rough in order to receive uh, uh, repair, back scattered repair. Okay, if it is a totally flat, we are not expecting any uh, return. So it shows dark or black scattering. Uh, we call it a Bragg scattering if it is totally flat or completely flat. So the surface must be uh, has a roughness degree in order to receive uh, part from the radar uh, repair. And we use the degree of randomness. <clears throat> we call it degree of randomness. So if it is a uh, flat, so we are not receiving uh, back scattered anymore. If it is a rough, so we are receiving back scattered repair 
high in terms of power and uh, uh, random. If it is more rough, which means it will be more random. And if it is more rough, which means it will be more random. So if we just extract it or classifying the surface sediment based on the degree of randomness of the backscatter signal, we can correlate it to grain size of the soil or different vegetation type or uh, different physical properties with different geomorphology, uh, more random. So we just focus on classifying the backscattering criteria based on the degree of randomness, which can be related to grain size of surface sediment or different vegetation type with different canopy or uh, mountain with different out shape, more rough or less rough, or uh, building. Okay, so in this uh, area west uh, of the River Nile, uh, and this uh, article we published it in Remote Sensing of the Environment, and uh, Professor Magali was my co-author of this uh, of this paper. Uh, we classified the surface sediment to gravel, we gravel, gravel and sand mixed between gravel and sand and sand based on the degree of randomness of the backscatter critique. Randomness, not the power. Uh, and also there is a option. We can extract which is called polarization signature. I can uh, deeply examine the direction and know exactly the direction of the backscatter retail using which is called polarization signature. And we can in detail classify uh, the difference between each object or each target on the ground. And also we can use it for vegetation, classifying the surface uh, vegetation cover uh, using which is called polarization signature. Uh, also there is a which is called Bowley RGB. Bowley RGB is a well-known uh, image for using full polarimetric satellite and based on the polarimetry and classifying uh, the image into, into the three main uh, components, red, green, blue. Red means double scattering mechanism. Uh, we are expecting double scattering mechanism from the vert vertical building or the stem of the, of the trees. So any feature on the ground has a vertical component, we are expecting double bounce scattering mechanism, which is here colored by the red. And the areas which is scattered the signals in a random way, like vegetation, rock area, mountainous area, it's getting the green color. And the flat area, which has a single bounce scattering or flat, relatively flat, flat like roots, uh, water bodies, stream, canals, all these uh, giving sing single bound. So the dark color and can, it can be given by uh, blue or dark blue. So the blue or dark blue, the area where the uh, signals scattered in a single bounce, like these canals, you can see here the canals. Okay, and the green is the vegetation and mountains, and the pink color or red color are the urban area. We can relate it to the urban area. Also, is another way to map the urban using uh, the scattering mechanism of the urban, which is give double bounce scattering mechanism. So this is another way to mapping the urban expansion using the back scattering uh, mechanism, and also. If we are measuring or detecting uh, the damage that already occurred uh, due to natural hazard, we can also measure the change. So we are expecting the building before the event, it will give uh, double bounce scattering. And after the, uh, the hazard, after the event, we are expecting all the building will be damaged or part of the building will be damaged. So we'll give uh, a volume scattering. So the changes in the scattering mechanism, it also can be indication for uh, for the effect of the damage of the event. So this is also a way how to use the change in the scattering mechanism uh, to detect the damage of any natural hazard event. 
Uh, also, I did this exercise uh, in an area here in Egypt, but not related to uh, uh, natural hazard event. It just, I used two different image, which is a, just exercise to, to show, to see how it comes. Because uh, Magali, I didn't find this methodology published already in the, uh, but anyway, I did uh, uh, the Bauli RGB in 2015, the lift one, A1, and I did also Bauli RGB for 2017, and just I subtract each of them, uh, and I got this uh, product, and I can see like this part, you can see there is a clear change here, this part, change for uh, scattering mechanism. So, yeah, it can be, we can move it more deeply and uh, quantify uh, the change in the scattering mechanism and we can relate it to, uh, to any change uh, that occurred on the ground surface. Uh, yeah, this is a satellite. I will move uh, quickly for ground penetrating radar. Also, we use it for uh, underground and it is also SAR sensitive aperture radar, the antenna is moving like the satellite which is flying on the orbit uh, for GBR is moving along uh, the ground surface and it's transmitting the radar signals inside the soil, not on the atmosphere like the satellite. So uh, also we can image the same target from different positions, the same background of uh, SAR and we can get uh, clear uh, scattered radar from the uh, ground. Um, this also exercise, we did it with Professor Magali. We uh, extracted uh, a radar return from a space-borne satellite, this red uh, profile. And we also generated uh, a GBR profile using GBR on the ground. And we did a mathematical way. We created also the power, averaging the power from the GBR. And we find there is a match between the spaceborne satellite and the ground base uh, or ground penetrating radar in terms of power, back scatter radar. Uh, just a quick, we use this uh, antenna of the radar satellite, it's transmitting 100 uh, megahertz uh, frequency, and we just doing the profile and we can generate from the profile 3D. Uh, here, this is the GBR profile, Example for an GBR profile, we can see uh, in this area there is a which is called ringing. The antenna is uh, propagating in a in a cave or free space, so it's go and uh, travel and scatter the back in this free space and giving which is called ringing. It's very clear uh, cave diffraction. Actually, it is a thickest book. I call the thickest book cave uh, diffraction. So we can image any cave using the uh, GBR. And this is, we can, using the GBR profiles, we can uh, make also uh, 3D. You can see here the GBR profiles. We collected uh, like 70 profile along this X direction. And also uh, along the Y direction, we collected many profiles with uh, constant interval, profile interval. This profile covering an area uh, with dimension 70 meters and 110 meters. And also we can create the depth slices. This is the ground surface, zero depths. And by moving, we moving deep here, like one meter depths. And we can see the diffraction from the cave very, very clearly. Now we are like two meter depth. As you know, the caves uh, do not have uh, regular shape or so it is irregular uh, shape of the cave. And also we did this exercise for uh, uh, landmine detection in Miami with my colleague in Miami University. And uh, we did that uh, during my PhD in Japan uh, for utility pipe detection. And we can clearly detect the pipe 
and we can generate the dips spices of the ground. And we can clearly detect the utilities, the underground utilities at different depths with the GBR. And we can make which is called the fish holding and just extracting uh, the high backscatter return of the radar signals and ignoring the surrounding. So we can just focus on the targets. Uh, and this area also uh, dips slice, it's covering uh, like a 12 meters in X direction and 14.5 uh, meters in Y direction. And this is the dips, zero dips. Uh, and now the dips here is changing like 0.3 meters, 40 centimeters. Actually, this was in an archaeological site and we uh, image very, very interesting one of our best uh test experiment we have done and we can clearly image a very clear cave uh not cave it's it's a uh, tomb uh hidden uh, in the ground at, at two meter depth with we can clearly estimate the dimension of this tomb And of course, at very deep, uh, we are still receiving uh, high power return, which is mean this part of the pump, it may contain metal object, uh, this one. Yeah, I'm done now. Thank you for your... Uh, uh, listening and you are welcome for any questions. Excellent. Very good. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, this was uh, really um, uh, very informative. I mean, I'm, I'm sure um, everybody agrees with me. Very informative and, and, and also um, very didactic um, talk because you showed uh, the different uh, applications using examples. So even for those who are not familiar with the radar, radar system and how it works, I think just looking at the applications, the potential of yes. uh, non-invasive, uh, you know, exploration, um, at, you know, uh, with using different platforms from satellite to airborne to ground, ground uh, is just uh, amazing. So I, what I will do now, I will stop uh, recording and open um, the session of questions and answers.